Once you get out of the train in Derby, you then enter this kind of realm of photography that's covering the whole city. It's in factories, it's in former factories. You might wonder why I'm wearing all these clothes, because we are in a freezing former chocolate factory, which is full of fantastic photography. There are something like 150 exhibitions or exhibitors in this festival, and they're scattered around the town. So the hub of it is the Quad Gallery, which is this really bizarre cube building which landed like a TARDIS in the middle of Derby. Just down the road from Quad is the Silk Mill, which is the first factory built in the UK. Then we have the Museum of Derby, which is very famous for its Joseph Wright of Derby paintings, a whole room of the fantastic paintings. And in that there are three exhibitions, one by Brian Griffin, then there is one of the Archive of Modern Conflict, which is about postcards of the past. And the third one is by Andreas Meissner. Then we have this building, the freezing cold chocolate factory. And the final of very large galleries is Dada, which is the dance centre of Derby. And there's a centrepiece there of Ken Grant's work. And we'll come back to that later. The theme of this exhibition and this whole festival is factory. And that was chosen by the director curator, Louise Clements. This year's theme of factory focuses on Derby's unique world heritage status. And Derby has the world's first factory and uh, is the birthplace of mass production. And we wanted to use that theme in as broad and diverse way as possible. You can use it in a very metaphorical way or you can use it in a literal way. And what we've got in this exhibition is factories in India and China, the post-industrial factories of Europe which are now empty and abandoned or turned into apartment blocks. We've got factories that are involved with coal. We've got wood being used in different places. There's a photograph collection over here by David Chancellor of women in Africa collecting wood for various buildings and so on and for exporting. We've got steel, which is the Tata steel industry in India. And there's a fantastic exhibition here by Ian Tay. His work is extraordinary because it, it actually looks so closely to paintings and it's also got an incredibly medieval feel to it. And he uses the gusts of smoke and dust to create a real atmosphere for this. Dark Clouds is a look at a, the Chinese economy, the flip side of the Chinese economy, how it, how it developed in the last 30 years and in a way, what were the ingredients that powered it? I was interested in the coal industry because that's where cheap energy came from. I was interested in cheap labor. I approached it by imagining myself as a miner or as a laborer in, in one of these places, being essentially a cog within a much larger machine, surrounded by these surreal landscapes. And just to close off the, the, the resources, I'm standing right next to an exhibition by a Polish photographer called Darek Portas. And there's one amazing scene here, which is the room where they all hang their boots and their outdoor home clothes when they go down the pit and presumably work half naked down in the pit. And so the whole ceiling, it's like an installation actually, the whole ceiling is completely covered with these things hanging up. To move on to Derby, there's a whole small room at the back of this gallery, because of course this is a center for trains, the railway invited all the people from Derby to come in on weekends and look at the trains and look at the buildings and the cleaning of the trains. There's wonderful black and whites of all these people shuffling through to look at these great big carriages that have held suspended over the tracks where they're being mended and so on. Hugh Davis, who's the professor of photography at Derby University, he's got some more recent photographs which is just covering different aspects of work. From there, let's move on to Liverpool photographer Ken Grant. His work has now come out of the archives and is now being seen, and it's a very lovely exhibition. There's two photographs in it in particular which are wonderful. And this girl lying with her pet dog, and there's limbs and arms and legs, and then it, they all kind of tangle up. And next to it is a photograph of this woman with her child on the beach, which is kind of Martin Parr, really, when he did his new Brighton work. There again, limbs and arms all tangled. And next to it, completely different, is a burnt-out pram with all the metalwork kind of entangled. It's a very interesting little show. Since the mid-1980s, I've been photographing relatively consistently in an area which is not necessarily that much more than a mile or two from the sides of the River Mersey. 
the people who, who were there, the people who were there, are people who I became very fond of and very attached to. And it's something that's built up over time. There are photographers who talk quite clearly about the, the process of dropping into a place, you know, the age-old idea would be you drop into a place with 10 rolls of film and if you're good enough as a photographer you come out with the definitive rendition of what that place is about. But I'm drawn to what happens over time when you travel back to places and travel through places. So it's about going back sometimes again and again and things change and people change and things open up and people open up and those kinds of things are really interesting to me. We move on to Brian Griffin. Now, Brian is well known to a lot of people because of the work he did on the builders of the St Pancras International Station when it was being rebuilt completely. And he did a superb collection of work, which was always about every level of the people who worked there, including the architects, the designers, the plumbers and the whole thing. And then he did the same thing for the Olympics last year at the National Portrait Gallery. Now, what he did for the Format Festival was he was invited to photograph portraits of people in Derby. The thing he's really, really good at is the relationships between the people in the photographs. But he's always seemed to me as if there's a kind of classic painting composition element to his work. And the group shots in this are particularly strong on that. There's one where there's four or five people quite crowded together and the eye line is always kind of geometric. They're all over the place. This person's looking at that person and there's always one who is a very strange kind of mysterious character in most photographs. Even the ones where he's got somebody standing on their own, they're just something about the hands because he's also got something where he plays with the geometry of the hands. I actually physically puppeteer all my people. I physically move their head. I actually touch their heads or their bodies or their hands or their arms. And I physically gesticulate or physically move them like a puppeteer. I actually do physically puppeteer my subjects. I start by marking their feet so they won't move from their position. So I've, they're all stuck in their position. Then I give them a sight line, something near me or to the side of me or something. And I say, can you look at that? I then decide where they put their hands. So then I tell them, say, to do that or do that or whatever with their hands. And so I've actually fixed them in position. And then all I do then is just obviously get the exposure right. This, I think, actually is probably one of the best works he's ever done. And it really is a very superb piece. So now we move on to something completely different, which is the exposure competition. This is an international competition that draws in people from all over the world with a theme of factory, obviously. And we had the most tremendous response. Thousands of images to go through from the beginning. What I like about it is they scattered it around different parts of the whole of Derby. So Quad Staircase, leading up to the lecture theatre and the cinema, has got some works. And then in the data centre, they have others. Liz Murray is a photographer from this country and she does some really stunning cut-out photocollages. So she drops a circle of a new scene or a landscape into a completely different setting. Paul Wenham Clark was somebody that everybody immediately rushed to vote for and he photographed in a prosthetics factory. Another one which is quite fun is the Put Put collection. And what they did was they made flowers out of kitchen objects. I think probably, apart from the Paul Wenham Clark one, Andreas Meischer's was the most popular. This was absolutely amazing. It was about testing. They're all a bit batty, actually. There's this woman there using toast. So she's got pieces of toast where she cut the crust off and she prints grids onto the toast as if she's doing a sort of grid of graph paper. I have no idea what she's doing. I can't work it out. The final one I'm going to mention is this umbrella test. There's this great, there's a guy crouching down with an umbrella that's open and it's to see how strong the wind has got to be before the umbrella collapses. So there's a huge fan in front of it and he's standing there with this umbrella. We thought that was really very good fun. TÜV is German and it's the abbreviation for Technischer Überwachungsverein. So what they do is they get prototypes of products before they go into mass production and uh, they test the products on their safety and performance. And uh, the TÜV is sort of in between the producer and the consumer. Actually the subtitle for the picture is Rust Grade Determination because that's 
what this test is called in German, if you translate it, it's called uh, Röstgrad Ermittlung in German. And what she does is she is uh, checking the toast on the degree of brownness, the evenness of the brownness on every step that the toaster provides. So what she does, she draws the grid on it, 16 small squares, and the more even the brownness on every one of the 16 squares, the better the grade for the toaster. I mean, we don't want a black hole in the middle and the rest white, <laughs> right? We want it evenly browned. <laughs> So now we return to Quad, and the main gallery in Quad is featuring the Dutch collector of photography, Eric Kassel. What he's done is he's collected over the years photo albums, family photo albums, and found photographs from photo albums. The exhibition's quite a big one, with very large photographs, he blows them up. He's got piles of photo albums that he's wrapped up in string, and they're all in piles around the floor, as if actually they've just arrived from somewhere. Then the other part of the room, he has piles of prints on the floor, just left there, abandoned, which is actually how he works. He finds things that are abandoned and he buys them. This exhibition started in a way from a fascination that I uh, had for about 15 to 20 years uh, of photo albums, that I, uh, family albums, that I find on uh, flea markets all over the world. I tried to show here what kind of habits and what kind of stereotypes that are often uh, shown in these albums. Something that you find often is that the man was the person who carried the camera. So many times you see only the wife or the woman in the photograph on her own. The more older the woman gets, the more uh, she disappears in the picture. So uh, she becomes smaller in the picture and you see more of the surrounding. So this means like that over time maybe the photographer has lost a little bit of uh, interest in its subject or the woman doesn't want to be photographed that close anymore but uh, because she gets older. So there are very interesting things to find in there. It's either uh, sometimes ironic or funny or uh, very uh, sad. It's just everything that is part of life in a way you find also in these albums. With this exhibition, hopefully I kind of uh, closed uh, my addiction a little bit to buy these things. And, but I don't know if I can stop with it because every time I see something uh, on the market and it's like five or ten euros. I find it strange that a whole life is kept in there and then uh, it's starting to rain and it starts to rot uh, the album so then I, uh, I save it and I uh, keep it uh, dry. <laughs> There's some very moving captions on them about the new baby in the house or the family or something that's going on. So you get the whole kind of cross-sectional span of their lifestyles. Now, with that one, I'm making a link here to a couple of others because in the Archive of Modern Conflict, the story there and the theme there is postcards from the northeast of England, which is the coastal resorts of Skegness and Mablethorpe, um, where the first Butlins holiday camp was, in fact. So you see both sides of the postcards. They've been photographed, and you see the messages. So you're actually more drawn to the messages in the postcard than the actual subject of the postcard itself. The interesting thing about them is when you walk around and look at them is the number of people who are saying how are you, is dad okay, sorry that so and so died, a lot of sadness in this and a lot of honesty in the back of the postcards, not the kind of thing that people usually write in postcards. And I'm not sure if this has been wittingly put together but the third element which links with this is the Thomas Servan collection. Now he's a French guy who's lived in China, in Beijing for 10 years and he started to notice in the rubbish tip near where he lived there was this guy who was collecting negatives wherever he could find them that he was selling and then they would be melted down for the silver nitrate content. So what Thomas Sovan did was to offer to buy all the negatives he would keep finding and to actually do something with them. And what he's done is he's collected an archive, a massive archive of thousands and thousands of images and it's a really interesting cross-section of life in China from 1985 to the present day. So this is post-Mao, but it's that era of a complete beginning of the rebirth of Chinese society. I think I was looking for what I would call the impossible shot or the perfect forgotten vernacular image. I actually didn't find that through these uh, first uh, 30,000 uh, images. Uh, and I rather found something very, uh, very banal, uh, 
quite ordinary. And then I understood that uh, this was actually the strong part of this archive. What's really special with these pictures, I guess, is uh, there's something quite paradoxal into them. On one side, you have um, a great lack of spontaneity. In China, photography is a ritual. People stand still. You almost can hear three, two, one, the picture is being shot. The person is looking at the, at the camera. And in the other hand, you have this complicity between the photographer and the person being photographed. So that's rather paradoxal. And it creates these images that are very authentic, uh, quite unpretentious, and uh, often pretty funny. That's a, a recipe that's actually very hard to get for any photographer, for a professional photographer. You can't have this complicity with the person you shoot all the time. These photos are about birth, they're about death, they're about love, they're about having fun, they're about traveling. And it's like very universal themes that naturally comes out of this quantity of images. And then, on the other side, you also have a very few stories that are very specific to the history of China at that time. Portraits of women posing with their fridge at the time when Beijing households were actually modernizing. Photos of people traveling to Thailand and having their photo shot with transvestites. So some very simple, expected and strong themes and some rather unexpected and uh, funny and slightly twisted uh, uh, little stories. So it's a combination of all of this. Let's move on to the mob format. Now this is an international open house for anyone around the world to send in photographs. We've had over 2,000 in the first few days. And now in the room behind me, right at the back here, there is a kind of print factory. And we've got a large format printer in the space and we're printing out the photographs, cutting them up and inviting the public to become curators and install the exhibition with us. We've been working with a group of photographers based in Bangalore on rubbish sites in those places and they've been photographing and they're still uploading it now, they will do throughout the next four weeks of the festival and we're outputting those photographs and putting them up on the wall and we've got a dialogue with people live from the site. By the end of the month when this is finishing there will be a whole exhibition of this stuff, every wall in that room will be covered. So listen, now having done that we're going to move on to the award ceremony. One of the wonderful pieces was Paul Gaffney from Ireland. He produced landscapes. Uh, there was one which was entirely grass, some of it flattened, presumably by animals or by tractors or something. So you get this kind of diagonal weft and weave which looked a bit like water. The project's called We Make the Path by Walking. I decided it's conceived as a book project. It's a, a landscape project for which I walked over the last year about 3,500 kilometres. The idea was to sequence the landscape images in such a way that you're bringing the viewer on the journey to, I guess, a fictional path, which is constructed from all the different walks that I went on myself. And I want to kind of get across that, the different sense that you have of your surroundings, of awareness of was the landscape or nature when you're just kind of even walking 30 or 40 kilometers a day for weeks at a time. And the main award of the night was the Grain Award, which was sent from Birmingham by Peter James, who is the director of the Birmingham New Library. This was won by Andreas Meissner. Now, I've talked about him already. He's the guy that was doing testing, all kinds of weird things, like toast for the darkness of the toast and so on. So this is Sunday, and it's the close of the opening weekend for Format Festival. And today, the Observer newspaper has a two-page spread by Sean O'Hagan. And in it, he compares the Format Festival with the two most celebrated photo festivals in the world, Arles and Photo Espana in Madrid. And that really bodes very well for format in the future. This means that the next one is going to be uh, even better.